2, 2 through 7. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom, all, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to, to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. The word of God for the people of God. exercise science degree pre-OT. Um, so I'm super honored when Jeremiah asked me to give this message and I hope that it can be encouraging to you hearing from someone that lived on this campus for four years, lived in Greyhound, lived in Cravens, and just like went through everything just like you guys are. So I hope this can be really helpful. Um, I'm going to be very open and honest about my walk of faith in college and so I'm just I'm really excited to get to be here. It feels like I'm talking to a younger version of myself and sharing my story. So, uh, we will get started. Um, so I'm gonna focus on community a lot and just that your process of faith is gonna look totally different than your friends, the other people you do community with, and that's okay. Um, just remember that in college, faith is your own thing and it's going to look different. So you don't have to be the person in front with their hands up. You don't have to be the person leading the small group. It looks completely different for everyone, but it's just as real for everyone. Um, but I hope that my story can help you love Jesus more through knowing his grace and that he always has a plan for you and the beautiful way that he can provide community for you, even on a college campus where we think he can be so far away. Um, being a Christian on a college campus is not always easy, and I wish I could have been told earlier how important faith is and how much joy it will bring you when you find those friends that lift you up and you find those spaces where you feel like you can totally be yourself in your faith. Um, so my faith story started mostly in college, but growing up I was raised in a Christian home, but faith was not something we actively did. It was just believing in God and celebrating Christmas, and that was kind of all we did with faith. And then my junior year of high school, my dad was diagnosed with stage three cancer, and we went through a really rough patch there with that. Thankfully, he's okay, but it brought all of us so much closer to God and just how important having a relationship with Jesus is. It's not just that believing. Um, and then some other things happened in high school where it kind of grew and grew, but it was never an important thing in my life. It just became more real. Um, and then whenever I got to UND, I became newly single from a very serious high school relationship. And I was so excited to get to be myself on a college campus and find my identity and just be passionate about things I wanted to be passionate about and not feel like I had to fit in in that serious relationship that I had been in. Um, so I started to read Psalms as soon as the breakup happened. And it, I was amazed by the connection I had with scripture and what was happening in my life. It was like, if I didn't read it for three days, and then I did, it was exactly what I needed to hear. And if I read it every day, it was exactly what I needed to hear. Um, oh, we have the PowerPoint. Wonderful. You can go back. Yeah, so that's my parents. That's my dad and my mom. Um, they're wonderful people. You can go to the next one. And that's my brother and sister. My brother is actually a year younger than me, even though he's much bigger. And then my sister is a senior in high school this year. And that is my soon-to-be sister-in-law. They are getting married on Saturday. So going home for the rehearsal tomorrow morning. So super exciting. Um, so yeah, back to this. So I started reading the Bible. That was kind of all I was doing. And then I found out about crew Bible study. And I went to the upperclassmen one because I was a cheerleader in college and I couldn't go to the undergrad one or the like freshman one because it was during practice time, but I got to meet four of like the biggest mentors in my faith walk through that group and so I know God completely like orchestrated that 
in giving me these women that could show me what life with Jesus looked like in college. Um, so that was such a blessing. And it was my first taste of being a part of a Christian community that wasn't just going to church on Sunday. Um, so even though I was kind of taking these steps of faith, it still wasn't my main focus in life. And being a freshman in college, I did all the things that college freshmen are supposed to do to have fun and enjoyment. So I saw a sense of community in the partying scene, and I justified every weekend that it was okay because I wasn't blacking out, I wasn't the drunkest girl there, I didn't have to go if I didn't want to, but I still was seeking my sense of approval and community in that way. And I was also seeking a lot of acceptance and affection in non-committed relationships and was having a lot of intimate things go on that should not have been and I justified that because I wasn't going all the way or I was the only person they were doing it with or I wasn't, you know, I, there was always something to justify it with and I had been sexually active with my high school boyfriend for years and so coming to college I didn't want to continue that loosely but I felt like if it didn't get that far it wasn't as bad and so I was excited about Jesus but also living this other part of my life as well. Um, and so that was kind of my freshman year of college. And then sophomore year, I came back to crew, and I could go to the freshman sophomore one, so I did. And um, that's where I met Ashley Alley. And she has been a best friend for years since then. And she invited me to go to this church called New Circle Church. And that is where I found my faith. I was surrounded by college students, parents, adults, and everybody loved Jesus, and their life was so full, and it wasn't this boring, I believe in God, and all I do is sit at home, and I feel lonely. It was, they were living life, and I wanted that. Um, you can go to the next slide. So, the picture on the left is Ashley, and she's here tonight, right up front and center. Um, and those are the girls that I did crew with second year. That was at a fall retreat conference, and I attended that, which was something I had never done. I did not grow up going to church camp, so that was the first time I had been like around a lot of people my own age doing Jesus things, um, and so that was really fun for me. And then I went to a camp or a conference over New Year's through Crew, and it was also like extremely life changing for me. And I finally felt like I had kind of stride, like was taking strides in my faith, but it still was not who I was. So I was still taking a lot of effort. Um, but I realized that I was starting to overflow with this new like energy from Jesus, and I just didn't really understand how it was happening. And then I realized that I had this, like I call it a Jesus-shaped hole in my heart, and I was finally filling it with Jesus. I wasn't filling it with drinking or partying or acceptance or boys or anything else that I had been trying. It was being filled with Jesus, and it was actually overflowing out of me. Um, and so, think of, this is how I think of it in my head, those baby toys that have the different shapes and you push it through when it's a circle or a star, that's like what our hearts look like, and we try to fill it with things that don't fit, and it might kind of go in for a little bit, but it doesn't fill it, and it doesn't work, it just, it's not when it's meant to go there. And that's what I was trying to do with all these other things in college. Um, and so, the things we try to fill it with, just won't work. We think that we can put something in there and we'll feel confident, we'll feel like we have purpose, we feel connected, we feel accepted, we feel right for a little bit, but then eventually it falls through, it disappoints us, it's not enough anymore, we have to seek it and seek it and seek it more, and it's still not enough, and it's because we're not filling it with the right things. Um, but I didn't realize this until I was a sophomore in college. I had been so lucky growing up that I didn't realize I even had this hole in my heart that I was filling with the wrong things. And so for some of you that may not connect with that yet, you may just be so lucky that you haven't been broken to the point where everything is stripped except God and that's what you have to lean on. Um, but unfortunately the things that you're filling it with, if it's not Jesus, it is going to disappoint you and you are going to realize that that's what's supposed to be there. Um, and it's different things for everybody. It's not relationships for some people. It's the things they wear, that they always want to go shopping, or that it's, I don't know, addictions of some sort, or social media. If you <laughs> cannot put your phone down, if you cannot get off Instagram for three days, if you cannot 
tweet or Snapchat or Visco or whatever you do, like, <laughs> that is a problem. You should not give it that much power over your life. You should not feel disappointed when people don't like or comment. You should not feel like, oh, it's not cool enough to post. Please put your phones down. And I know that really sounds like a grandma, but please put your phones down. Like, your life is so much more than what other people see on there, and their lives are, are not as good as they seem. And after that New Year's conference I went to, I gave up Instagram for like, I tried to do it the whole year, but I only went nine months. And um, like, you don't realize how much happier you are without it. Like, you are so much more present. You are so much more fulfilled in yourself and the way you look and your achievements and the things that are going on. And so I challenge you all to just get off Instagram for a week, one week, and see how much better you feel about yourself. And if you struggle with depression or anxiety, I will almost guarantee you that getting off of whatever your social media app is will make you feel better. So, tangent, but I think it's important. Um, <laughs> so, you, we're going to move on from that. <laughs> um, so, I recognized this issue in my life as a sophomore, but unfortunately not much has changed since those four years. I still struggle with the exact same things, um, but it does get easier. Once you can put a name to it, you can recognize it in your own life, and once you recognize it, tell a friend. Tell that best friend. Tell or tell the person that you never see so then you don't have to talk to them about it all the time. <laughs> Whatever that looks like, tell someone so that you know someone's looking out for you and maybe praying for you in that struggle or asking you just out of the blue how it's going because you need to surround yourself with people that can encourage you and keep you accountable. Faith is a hard, hard thing to do, even in Christian circles. And so if you're not in a Christian circle, it's that much harder. And so surround yourself with people that lift you up. Um, so after I went on that New Year's conference, Ashley and I actually started a small group here on campus through Nurse New Circle Church, and um, we called it Community Group, and we, we were crazy and bold, and I don't think I could do it today, but we emailed and texted people in our classes that we thought were maybe Christians that weren't a part of the group, and said, we're going to have this space, it's not going to be sit and talk about your Bible, we want to talk about life and struggle and what it's like to be a college student and frustrations we have with the church and just a space for people to talk about life. And so we did it and people showed up and Jesus showed up and we were terrified. We like went in the bathroom. So it was in the basement of Switzer. We like went in the bathroom and we were both like crying and panicked. Like no one's gonna come. We're not gonna know what to talk about. It's gonna be awkward. No one's gonna come back. And Jesus showed up and continued to show up. Um, you can go on. So this was at the end of sophomore year, I think. I'm not sure, I should have looked at the date. But we had to move chairs. We eventually got in trouble and someone from Switzer put a sign up that if you move furniture, please put it back how you found it because we weren't putting it back right. Um, but yeah, so community group was such a blessing and I met a lot of good friends through that time. Some of my closest friends. But we started there, then we went to the health pavilion because that's where we were all, we were like exercise science nursing students, so it just made more sense to go there. Um, and then eventually it grew beyond that to having a second community group meeting time because not enough people could come. And then someone went to IUPUI and started a program there, their PT program, and then a girl, also here, Stacy, started a, one in the PT program here. And then another friend of mine started one in the OT program, and like the ripple effect that God has done through that is just mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Um, you can go on. These are just some of my friends. I like to have pictures during presentations. So there's two dogs, and in that picture are my best friend Kylie and Aiden, and then in the other picture is Megan and Lexi. And so those are just some of my closest friends. And then the next one are some more. So that's our annual Houndsmas. So all of us old hounds get together and wear our pajamas and eat sugar for dinner. And then that's Stacy. Um, so yeah, those are my people. That's who I did community with for a couple years. And yeah, I just love them. They completely made me who I am. We found our faith together. None of us were active Christians. None of us. And we all just became really passionate because we were so honest with each other and figured out what Jesus was and what grace was. and 
how to ask for forgiveness and be honest with people. And so I just encourage you to find that, whether it's in a community group through chapel or just you and your friends meeting on your couch once a week. But make it accountable, make it consistent, make it intentional, talk about hard things, don't just, you know, beat around the bush. Like, be real with each other, talk about what's hard, because that's the only way to get past it, and it is so important to get past it. Don't live in that place where you feel like you're just constantly struggling and like trudging through. Like, do it, get through it, take that step, be brave, give up the thing that you're seeking, um, but you have to talk to people about it. Because if you don't, then you just hide it and you justify it. And I, I'm guilty of that. Um, because whenever I was leading, um, I continued in all the things that I struggled with. When I started community group, I, and for like the next year and a half, I was sexually active with a guy that I was not dating and I was leading that group. And like, who does that? Who is a Christian leader? And staying over at a guy's house that she's not even dating for a year. Like, God used me, because God would not, we would not pick that person to lead. But God used me in that, and I'm so thankful for it. But, like, you do not have to be perfect to be a Christian. You do not have to be perfect to grow. He will use whatever you're going through to use you. Um, you can move on. Another thing we did through community group was we went to Haiti, and I got to go twice, and I absolutely loved it. Um, but the first time I went, so the picture on the right was the first trip, and during that time, the every single night, I didn't have my phone either, no data in Haiti. Um, but <laughs> every night, I was curious what people were doing on spring break. It was my junior year, a huge group of people went to Florida, and all I wanted to know was who was having fun, who was with who, like, that was my brain. That was what I was thinking about whenever I was in Haiti serving people. Loving every minute of it, but I was still torn between this Christian heart and this like secular heart that wanted both. And then the second trip, I was dating a guy and we were actively having sex. He did not believe in God. We had conversations about it. Did not believe Jesus was real. And so I just want you to know that Jesus uses you. You do not have to be perfect. You do not have to have this clear record for Jesus to use you, and like, you're still gonna mess up even once he does start using you. But that's not the encouragement to walk in that, that's just to know that it's okay if you are, that you don't have to be perfect. Um, because his grace is insane. Grace, if you've never experienced it or learned about it, dive into the word and learn about grace because it is the most beautiful and wonderful thing that you will ever feel. Um, yeah. So, these things that we're filling our heart with, whenever they no longer fill your heart, you have to seek God in that. Don't fill it with something else. Um, realize it, that you're broken, and seek God in it. It doesn't have to look like a perfect walk of faith, but open your Bible. Read whatever page it's on if that's what it takes. Get the app. Set it to go off in the morning or at lunchtime. Um, just do what you can to get closer to God. And whatever your filler is, know that you are going to need community forever. Not just in college. You're going to need it once you graduate, once you get your first job. After college is hard. You lose all these people. You don't go to dinner together. You don't see your friends every night. Like It is hard. And you want that community of people that are real with you. And you can text and be like, I am lonely and all I want to do is blank and they will say no come over like we're gonna do this instead you need those people so find them here and cherish them and pour into those friendships um, because you need it you need it so much oh, goodness <laughs> it's so important it's so important I just wish it like someone would have told me how real community is for your faith like you can know it in your bedroom at night alone when you read your Bible but whenever you're surrounded in it and you're just like overflowing with joy you just want to like go for a run because you're just like hyped up about it, like that is the Holy Spirit because of the community that you are in. Um, like who doesn't want that? Nobody feels that good when they're drunk at a party. Nobody feels that good when they wake up and have to like go back to their room the next day. Nobody feels that good. If you buy the new Apple Watch, like it's fun for three days because no one else has it and then it's gone. Like that does not fill you up, but being in that community all the time is what will fill you up. And so, I hope that you can find people to do faith with. I hope that you can find 
someone or group of people that you can be real with, that you can talk to, and that you try. You have to pour into those friendships. It can be awkward because it might not be your best friends, and sometimes that's better than your best friends. Sometimes your best friends are the people that are keeping you where you don't need to be. So if you can find that new circle, sometimes it's better. And you can have two circles. I have lots of circles in my life. Like, it's okay to have friends that are Christians and friends that are, and friends that are somewhere in between. Like, do it. Who doesn't want more friends? Like, go for it. Um, but just don't compromise in college. Do not justify what you're doing because you're in college. I am so guilty of it, and I am still guilty of justifying things that I do, but don't compromise. I just, it's, you just regret it so much, and I wish someone would have told me to stay firm in what I do <coughs> and stay firm in my faith, and to be honest with myself about the things that I care about, because the guy that comes in and sweeps you off your feet, or the girl that comes in and sweeps you off your feet, is, there's a very small chance that it's a person you're going to marry, and so don't compromise for that moment of feeling good and feeling accepted. Um, but realize that you and me is a special place. You are surrounded by really strong Christians in this room, people that have never talked about Christ before, and that is the real world. You are going to be around people that don't support faith once you leave here. You're going to be, or you can choose to be in circles where you are surrounded by Christians. So practice what that looks like right now, talking about God to people trying it out. Like, see what that feels like in college before you're out and you have to intentionally do it. Because once you're out, you're not surrounded by people your own age to just talk at lunch. You're at your office, you have four employees that you eat lunch with, and that is your social circle, unless you intentionally seek it out. So, do it now, find your people, figure it out, because this is where it happens. Um, you can go on to the next one. This is another picture. So this was in the health pavilion. This was my soft junior year, maybe? I'm not sure. I should have known. Um, but that's just another group of us. You can go to the next one. These are my other friends. That's Jen. She was my roommate for a couple years. She was kind of that other circle. Love her to death, but she was that other circle of a friend. And then those are my roommates from GB. That's Abby, she's also here. And then Callie, she's a Disney World, so, you know, Disney World Chapel, I get it. Um, try to get to know God's grace. Dive into that, dive into the word, pray about it, ask for it. And don't be ashamed to say that you've messed up, to talk to God about what you've done that's messy or ugly or a mistake. Um, be strong in your faith, care about it. It is the most important thing, care about your faith. It is huge. Don't feel like it's weird if you're a Christian. Don't feel like it's weird if you pray. Be strong about it. Care about it. Um, and know that God is here to walk with you as you do it. You're not doing this alone. He is not going to ask you to figure this out on your own. So just ask him to be with you, and he will. You'll feel it. So I pray that you can fill that Jesus-shaped hole in your heart. Whatever you're filling it with, take it out. Fill it with Jesus, and listen for him to just overflow from your heart and put the people in your life that he wants to be there. Um, fill your heart with God and you won't need anything else to feel full, to feel important, to feel valued, to feel wanted, or to feel accepted. Thank you. <laughs>